Hey guys, welcome back to the King of Glory. Um, we are continuing on in a series of this point in the year, I would call them short devotional messages that all focus in on uh, either the character and nature of Jesus as our King of Kings or uh, how his kingship, how his preeminence, his sovereignty, his um, absolute right to rule and reign over everything, how that impacts our lives or how that impacts the church or how that impacts the world. Um, and I want to just say to you as um, you watch this message, I'm recording this message just a few days into the uh, the war that's broken out in Israel, Hamas, uh, just brutally um, in, in what's, you know, several times worse than our 9-11 here in America, um, just uh, murdered uh I don't know the number uh, by the time you watch this. I know as I'm recording it, I think it's over a thousand Israelis and there's, you know, scores missing. And I want to just encourage you, I, no matter what might be the state of affairs as you watch this, I'm sure that there will still be conflict going on and we are doing all we can to provide help. And I would ask you to consider um, giving into our, our Israel Relief Fund. Um, we do a lot of great work there on the ground and... Uh, Maybe by the time you watch this, I'll be I'll be there and be able to um, you know record some some stuff from there in the land. So um, also I well I just want to point out that I'm wearing my Emmaus online um, little little hoodie um, and it's a good reminder that we're entering into another course year for Emmaus online that will start I think January or February of 2024. Registration is still open. We'd love for you to join us so you can check out the link in this video and, and check out Emmaus online. Today I want to consider how um, Jesus reigns supreme in us and among us as he reproduces his resurrection, his resurrection life, his risen life within us. And uh, I want to start actually by looking at a at a promise that I see in Ezekiel 37 to Israel that I think shows how it's always been the heart of God for whatever is in him, the, the life that, um, that, that he represents, the, that his rulership um, creates in, in the world is the life that he wants. He wants that, that life to have an impact on us. He wants that to be reproduced within us. And so... Let me just read you these verses from Ezekiel 37. I'll read verse 22 through, uh, I guess, the end of the chapter. I will make them one nation in the land on the mountains of Israel. There will be one king over all of them, and they will never again be two nations or be divided into two kingdoms. They will no longer defile themselves with their idols and vile images or with any of their offenses, for I will save them from all of their sinful backsliding, and I will cleanse them. They will be my people, and I will be their God. My servant David will be king over them, and they will have all have one shepherd. They will follow my laws and be careful to keep my decrees. They will live in the land I gave to my servant Jacob, the land where your fathers lived. They and their children and their children's children will live there forever, and David, my servant, will be their prince forever." I will make a covenant of peace with them. It will be an everlasting covenant, and I will establish them and increase their numbers, and I will put my sanctuary among them forever. My dwelling place will be with them. I will be their God, and they will be my people. Then the nations will know that I, the Lord, make Israel holy, where my sanctuary is among them forever. I mean, this is a such a beautiful prophetic promise that is yet to, to be realized, but will be realized, and, and there's a day coming where the one who was born in the lineage of David, Yeshua, uh, will return and be king over all of Israel. If you don't like that, you better get used to it, um, because there's a day coming when he will return back to the Mount of Olives in the same way that he ascended. David Pawson says you could take that, um, if you could video his ascension, you could play it in reverse, and that's what it'll look like when he returns, and I believe that's true. And when he returns, the life, all that's within him, will be reproduced uh, for those who, who follow him, that, that his life will be our life. And I love how this is promised to the people of Israel, that there's, there's a day coming where he will make them one, and he will um, 
and, and, and those who come to know him will, will, will follow him under this uh, everlasting covenant where he will make his dwelling place amongst them and amongst us. And I, I just love the promise that's pictured in that. And I think when you flip over to Philippians, you know, into the New Testament, um, and you get into Paul's letters, you see Paul as a, as a, a Jew who has come to know the Lord, um, reconciling this in his own life and in our lives and those who follow Jesus it, by essentially taking the same sort of deep prophetic promise about the supreme rulership of Jesus and what that means as it's reproduced in our lives. And he begins to apply this out to the church in Philippi with, uh, with prayers and with, uh, you know, prophetic words. And so hear what he says in Philippians 1. I'll, I'll start with verses 9 to 11, and you'll see how he is in these verses offering as a prayer the idea that the, that the life of Christ would be reproduced in us. And this is my prayer, that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight, so that you may be able to discern what is best and may be pure and blameless until the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ. This is such a beautiful prayer. He's saying that I, I want you to be, um, you know, abounding in love so that you'll grow in knowledge uh, and have a depth of insight, that you'll have proximity, intimacy with Jesus. The more you get to know him, the more his life will be produced in you. And that as you grow in this way, that he'll actually fill you with the fruit of the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. This is to me such a powerful promise and prayer that as we draw close to the Lord, He draws close to us. He always, He's always going further in the relationship than we go. But as we lean into Him, He pours the fruit of righteousness into us, that his life is actually being reproduced in us. The, 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 I think some of the benefits of a resurrected life begin to be realized even prior to our, to our resurrection in that we have the fruit of righteousness being produced within us. And then flip forward to verses 20 and 21, um, where Paul says, um, I eagerly expect and hope that I will in no way be ashamed, will have sufficient courage so that now, as always, Christ will be exalted in my body, whether by life or by death, for to me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. This is, again, uh, such a powerful thing for us to apply in our own lives and to recognize that as Jesus reigns supreme in us, this is exactly what he looks to produce in our lives, is the kind of risen life within us that would... Um, be willing to say that that whether we live or we die, we all we really are aiming at in our lives is for the life of Christ to be exalted in our lives, for the the character, the nature, the purposes of God to be exalted in our life, so that whether we live or die, um, the thing that matters is is that we are exalting the worthiness, the worth, the beauty of Jesus for anyone that we that we come into contact with, with our words, with our lives, with our attitudes. Um, you know, throughout. So, and as he says, to, to live as Christ and to die as gain, he's saying, and I think this is where the rubber meets the road. He's saying, you know, I, I don't think Paul has a death wish. I don't think he's got some sort of crazy martyr complex, but what he's saying is I've come to the realization that in Jesus Christ, I have a resurrected life. So the worst thing that you think you could do to me is to take my life, but ultimately you're not taking anything from me because I... I get to live, I get to live for Jesus, but to die is actually even greater because ultimately I'll be resurrected and live forever in the presence of, of the Lord. That is what Jesus wants to reproduce in our lives. This is why I am such uh, a fanatic, such a, a trumpeteer about the Lordship of Jesus because as he rules supreme in us, it's his desire through his rule and reign to reproduce his life in us. That's a powerful promise for you on this Monday. And so Jesus, I ask that you would pour your spirit out, that you would pour your life out, that as we draw close to you, that you would reproduce your life in us, your risen life in us. Amen. Maranatha.